HomeKit Secure Video offers HomeKit users with an iCloud Plus subscription to use Apple's iCloud service to securely stream and store video clips from compatible third-party indoor and outdoor cameras as well as doorbells. However, the compatible devices can be quite expensive, especially considering if you already have some devices in place. Today I'll be showing you how to bridge your existing devices together to create a seamless video doorbell with HomeKit Secure Video Support. This isn't the best way or the only way to do this, but this is how I've had it set up and it's been working great for me. The key component for this is Scripted. Scripted is a home automation platform that allows us to communicate with the three major home hubs. Essentially, you can control things with your voice or preferred app, whether it's Google Home, Apple HomeKit or Amazon Alexa. We'll be taking advantage of the Apple HomeKit control. First and foremost, you must have an iCloud Plus subscription to use HomeKit Secure Video. You can still create a working doorbell without this, but then you'll lose out on the HomeKit object detection as well as video recording. Camera footage does not count towards your iCloud data limits. You're effectively given up to 10 days of unlimited video storage for your cameras that are recording. Secondly, in order to use HomeKit Secure Video with Scripted, um, you will need a home hub. So that could be uh, an iPad that's always on the network at your home, or a HomePod or a HomePod Mini, or the best case would be an Apple TV. An Apple TV plugged into your network via Ethernet will work the best. However, my setup is working fine with a HomePod Mini, which is connected to my Wi-Fi network over the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. Finally, to bridge your existing cameras into HomeKit, we'll be using Scripted. This will need to be installed either locally on a server or through Docker. The GitHub link for Scripted in the description has some instructions on how to do this. It is recommended to use the Docker installation on Linux, but as the Docker installation isn't available for Windows and Mac, I've run Scripted locally on my Mac. Once you've installed Scripted and you've got it running, it's now time to set up the doorbell. If you do have any issues, I would recommend heading over to the scripted Discord server as that's a great place for any help. HomeKit Secure Video requires a camera, a motion sensor, the HomeKit plugin, and the pre-buffer mix-in video camera rebroadcaster plugin. You can either use cameras with built-in motion alerts, like the Unify cameras or Amcrest or Hikvision cameras, or you can use an RTSP stream camera with the OpenCV plugin, which essentially gives you motion detection locally running on your server. This will use a bit more CPU power, but it is a great option if you don't have a camera with built-in motion alerts. And this is the way I have mine set up. Firstly, we need to make sure we have the correct plugins installed. We'll need the HomeKit plugin, the Rebroadcast plugin, and the Dummy Switch plugin. Depending on your camera setup, install the camera plugin appropriate for your camera. If there's no plugin for your camera, but it does support motion alerts using mail, uh, you can use the generic RTSP camera controller plugin, as well as the SMTP plugin and a dummy switch plugin to create a mail activated motion sensor. In my case, I'll be using the RTSP plugin, as well as the OP, uh, OpenCV motion detection plugin for motion detection. To set up the RTSP camera stream, head into the RTSP camera controller plugin once it's installed and add an RTSP camera by giving it a name. Click the green arrow to continue. Now look under the providing things area and click on the RTSP camera we just created. Here under the settings we can input the RTSP stream URL as well as the username and password for that stream. There is also the ability to use multiple streams if your camera does support it. For example, at my system, we have a mainstream, which is essentially the high resolution one, and then a substream, which is the low resolution version. This is actually useful as we can then use the low resolution stream for our open CV motion section, as it won't require as much processing as the high resolution one would, making performance a bit better. On the left, under integrations and extensions, let's enable the OpenCV motion detection plugin and the rebroadcast plugin for the RTSP camera. We need the OpenCV motion detection as this is a requirement for HomeKit Secure Video. So this will actually detect video from the stream and then trigger HomeKit Secure Video to actually record the video. There are further settings for the OpenCV motion plugin, which can be adjusted to alter the motion sensing. Here we can choose which stream the motion analysis will be done on. So I've chosen my lower resolution stream. 
We can also choose how big of an area of change the video stream must have to uh, be registered and trigger motion. And finally, we can choose the frame analysis interval. So this determines how much time the plugin will wait for motion analysis again. It's almost similar to the cooldown time on a PIR motion sensor. Moving on to the rebroadcast plugin, this plugin will keep a buffer of a set duration of the stream in memory, which can help greatly with performance when viewing the stream. You can choose specifically which streams are kept in memory. As I only output my high resolution stream and only use my low resolution stream for motion detection, I've set it up that the pre-buffer is only active for the high res stream. However, if you plan on viewing the low res stream for remote viewing, you can enable that accordingly. We must now create a doorbell dummy switch that when switched on momentarily will trigger a HomeKit doorbell notification and chime. So we'll head over to the dummy switch plugin and on the right we'll give our dummy switch a name and continue. We'll then click on the dummy switch and then make sure that its type is set to a switch. Under integrations and extensions let's select HomeKit. This will expose it within HomeKit so that we can trigger it using another HomeKit device like an IKEA trad free shortcut button. Under settings, we must make sure that the dummy switch resets itself after a certain amount of time so it can then be re-triggered later. We'll now move on over to the device groups area and create a new device group. Let's give it a name and set its type to doorbell. Don't forget to click on the green arrow to save your choice. Now under the selected device interfaces, let's select our RTSP camera stream we want for the doorbell and the dummy switch button we created earlier. Make sure you select the binary sensor. We can now click save group and under integration extensions, select HomeKit so that this whole group is now exposed to HomeKit. Be sure not to enable OpenCV motion detection or the rebroadcast plugin at this stage as it is not required on this device group and can actually hinder your performance. Finally, reload the HomeKit plugin and assuming that you've already added scripted as a bridge to HomeKit, it will show up shortly. Now let's move to the home app. Like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be using an IKEA trad free shortcut button as our physical doorbell. This is a fairly cheap option at just six pounds for the button and then 22 pounds for the trad free hub, but you can use any HomeKit compatible button or switch. Now the IKEA trad free shortcut button isn't actually intended for this use as a doorbell as well as being outside against the elements, but I've been using it for a couple months in both hot and dry and cold and wet weather and it's been working perfectly fine. This next step will vary depending on which HomeKit button you are using, but for the IKEA trad free button we select it and we go to actions and change both the single press and long press action to turn on the dummy switch from scripted. By adding this to both the single press and long press action, it means that no matter how someone presses the button, it will register the click and trigger the doorbell chime. And now we're pretty much done. Just double check that under the settings in the doorbell camera accessory from scripted, under notifications that your doorbell is set to chime. And here you can also choose which HomePods it will use. So you can either limit it or select all HomePods. If you are using HomeKit Secure Video, head over to the recording options and set the recording options accordingly, as and when you'd like them to record. So you can either set them to just stream or to record and stream. You can also go back to notifications and turn on activity notifications to alert you whenever a person, animal, vehicle, or even a package is detected. Thank you very much for watching. Please do leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you found the video useful. If you'd like to know more about how to get the doorbell to chime through a Google Home device, please let me know in the comments and I can make a good tutorial for that too. See you next time. Bye.